there are things that are fundamental for a man to feel the way he needs to feel to stay in a relationship. And what I'm hearing, Susie, is that Chris really loved you a lot. And especially, you know, in the beginning, things were really great. And they were great for quite a while. And he was happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know this because he proposed. Correct. Yeah. And that just would not have happened, especially living together, had he not Mm -hmm. been very happy. Correct. So it's important to recognize a few things when things changed. And you had mentioned about suddenly he came to you, or seemingly out of the blue, he came to you about things uh, that he felt he was not getting, which is Mm -hmm. the emotional... um, feeling from you or the what did he say specifically about that he stated that he felt like I was not affectionate enough and is that really um, euphemism for there was not enough sex or he was not getting the sex that he wanted that could be it so it wasn't really stated he really just said affectionate enough Correct. What do you really believe it is or was now looking back and hindsight being 2020? Looking back now, I can see that I was so preoccupied with making sure that our home was clean, that I cooked dinner for him every day when I got home, um, that I was always so busy doing that. And all he ever wanted, I do remember, he would sit down and watch TV. And he's like, come sit down with me. And I'm like, I can't because i got to wash dishes. Then i got to do laundry. Then i got to sweep. And mm. I, I always had, I always was doing something. I see. Okay. So you know that he was missing something for him that was fundamental. hmm So that's something yeah. that can be fixed, right? Because looking back, you would do that a little differently, right? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So nothing, see, major here that I'm hearing Mm -hmm. because you recognize it and you would do it differently Mm -hmm. now. But here's the rub. One thing I did hear a lot is that you guys were talking a lot You were verbalizing everything in the relationship and talking a lot. And if you've read my book, you know that I talk about one of my fundamentals, which is women relate via verbalization. Men relate via action. And when we talk about a relationship a lot, it actually talks a man into, in his mind, when you're having these discussions and the feelings during the discussion and afterwards, he talks himself into not having feelings for you. Yep, I I agree with that because I believe um, the last week and a half that I was there prior to me moving out, and he did state this, he did share this with me, that every day after work, we will, I, would like, I would ask him, can you please come here and sit down? And we would talk about the relationship. And now that I look back at it, I should have left it alone and then just moved out without even talking about it because I, now I feel like I was beating a dead horse. Mm-hmm. And prior to it, even when after you got engaged, The work that needs to be done, and I can go out on the limb and say this, in most relationships, when the man is showing 
his love and commitment like Chris did, meaning he knows who you are after a year of living with you. He's so committed that he asked you to marry him. That's huge, right? It is. Sure, huge. He loved you that much. That the work that needed to be done, if you were basically happy with the relationship, which it sounds like you were, is with you. It's usually not about the man, and here's why. Because we are the mechanics of a relationship, and the mechanic of our particular relationship car with that particular man. And we keep the relationship running, oiled, uh, ready to go, and in good running order. And it's what we do, not what we talk about. Okay. So there is a shot here for you to get back together should that love still be strong. It sounds like it's something you would like. Am I right about that? I do want that. And and I just spoke to him, actually, like I said, I've been making the mistake of reaching out to him. I did talk to him this past week, actually on Monday. And I, I just, I just kind of like check in to see how his healing process is coming along and what he really is, you know, where his head is, where his heart is at. He did state that um, he's gotten to the point where he's um, happy to be alone. And if this does not work out, he would be okay with it. Yes, because what you're doing is a huge mistake. Yes. It's more discussion. Mm -hmm. It's more attempting to relate to him via verbalization. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense, right? It is something Mm -hmm. to us that is natural Mm -hmm. and feels like we are connecting. But because Mm -hmm. men are the opposite of us, it makes him feel disconnected. Yeah, I'm learning that... um, by me push, by me reaching out to him, I'm actually pushing him away. But in my mind, I felt like I have to make my presence known because if I don't, he's going to forget about me and he's going to move on. Okay. I, I love that you said that because I'm going to say something that you really must get if you want to have any chance with him. Mm-hmm. Men love through wondering. When you say, I need to make my presence known, Mm -hmm. it's actually that he knows that you would be present should he want you to be, is exactly why he is not interested in pursuing anything. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this is why I say the work is always with us. Because if Mm -hmm. you turn this around, you, Mm -hmm. and only you, without him, this can have a shot. Because the love was there. The Mm -hmm. profound enough love that he was a buyer for you. And even with all the talks, all the metaphoric, ways Mm -hmm. of taking him out and putting him under a relationship car to fix that he knows nothing about, he was still on board. Mm -hmm. Right? Correct. And here's what happens. And why I use my mechanics of men in my work with women is because the metaphor is so profound. If you two uh, have this relationship and it is in a metaphoric car, if he said to you, in order for our relationship car to work, 
I'm going to take you out under our real car and I'm going to teach you how to fix and put together a real car. And you're going to be on that cold, rolly thing on the cement floor and you're going to be looking up the, at the car and, and feeling claustrophobic under the car and looking up at the engine and he is going to try to talk you through you knowing how to fix it. You would want to do that in order for the relationship car to run, correct? You'd want to get it. Correct. You'd, you'd want to be able to fix it. So you would try and you would try correct. and you would try and you would try, just like he did by talking to you. Eventually, mm-hmm. because you just can't get it, it's not who you are as a woman. Eventually, you would push yourself out from underneath that car and stand up and say, I just want a new car. It's not going to work. And that's what happened. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yep. So, when you said about changing with this strict diet, so to speak, that we would put you on with the approaches that work to set about is wondering and longing for you. Mm -hmm. This can happen through time. And what I mean by that is that just what I said, men love through wondering and longing. And right now, Here's what he feels, and this is going to be hard to hear, but Mm -hmm. you have to know it. Right Mm -hmm. now, he is in a state of complete relief. He's relieved that it's over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, there is a a little twinge of guilt about it because he knows how you feel. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. He did actually... A week after I moved out, he did send out a text message um, expressing that he um, he's sorry that he's putting us through this. But yep. he's also stated that he feels like he owes me something. Okay. Okay. Understood. That's guilt, right? That's guilt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's that's great that he has that in him. We want our men to be normal and have normative guilt. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. However, we've got to relieve him of that because if you don't and he stays in his relief and guilt, he can never feel for you what he needs to feel to ever consider going back with you. Okay. Okay? Because Mm -hmm. that does not inspire a man's love at all. Right? Guilt never inspires a man. He must want you, desire you, and feel free and easy again to be in control of his life, his love, what he wants. Yeah, and I feel like I'm forcing myself back into his life every time I reach out to him. Yes. And you are, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. I yes. cannot make him change. That, that his, he decided to end this relationship, and that is his free will, and I cannot change that for him. Right, but it can change by you doing things that will feel actually uh, oxymoronic, for better, mm-hmm. lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. Because you must do what feels mm, unnatural to you. Mm -hmm. You must not do so many things that will feel natural to you. Okay. And through this transformation, he can then go through the steps he needs to go through and the transitions he needs to go through. For example... He needs to go through now a period from relief and guilt into 
wonder, and longing. And if you continue to reach out, to do what you're doing, to have discussions, to for mm -hmm. him to know that you would go back, mm -hmm. you are prolonging this feeling of relief and guilt, and he can never get to the wondering and longing. Okay. And that takes work. It takes steps because it's it's a dance, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take you doing some things that will um, elicit initially his wondering. And it's okay. it's step by step. And there's a lot okay. to it. And it's what I talk about in my Lore Him Back program. Okay. It takes intention. It takes transformation in us to understand mm -hmm. what we're doing with intention that has the best chance of working. Because if you continue down this road, it won't. It won't. No more talking to him. There's not going to be any change in him if things don't change for you. Because he's right. relying, right, in terms of if we look at this from a macro level. If you're the mechanic of the relationship car, which you are as the woman, you're continually doing something that doesn't work. Right. The relationship car is never going to run. Mm -hmm. And he's just going to go and get another car. True. But if you get, get high-level mechanics, so to speak, and the car starts working despite himself, <laughs> mm -hmm. it can. And I'm hearing that mm -hmm. there is... A potential for that if you really commit to doing the steps and making the tough changes to do what works and mostly to not do what doesn't mm -hmm. and in weekly working on it you really come out with the knowledge and the transformation personally that allows it to develop if there is a chance of that. And I'm, I'm really hearing that there is. But you really have to nip so much in the bud right now and stop because he won't be able to transition out of what he's feeling right now. It will just get right. more and more entrenched in him and his interest will go elsewhere. Correct. I, I, I fully understand that. I, I don't know if it's just my fear that I can't control the outcome or that I want to control the outcome, mm -hmm. which is my reasoning. That's my logic behind, well, let me just call him and see how he's doing, or let me just text him. And mm -hmm. he does reply, and he does answer the phone. Sure. But I want him, I, but I want him to do it because, not because I'm calling but I want him to also want to feel that he wants to reach out to me. And I have not allowed him to do that because mm -hmm. I'm, I've been so predictable that he yes. knows I'm going to call. Yes. And he knows that if a week goes by, he's going to call. Two weeks That's go right. by, she's going to call. He, yes. he already knows this. You're not making him wonder at all. I can't make him miss me because I'm always there. That's right. That's right. And there has to be a change here. And that's what I help each woman in her unique situation change and make a plan. Because when you have a plan whereby you know, okay, this week all I must do is this. Mm -hmm. And then you get to talk through your feelings about it and ask mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. And then the next week, 
we make the second step, right? And the second plan. And inch okay. by inch to move him up the scale mm-hmm. and allow him to have that wonder. But most importantly, move through what he's feeling right now, which is mm-hmm. relief coupled with guilt. And the reason he answers the phone and puts himself through the uncomfortable feelings you're making happen in him by the, mm-hmm. the, the call, mm-hmm. that even asking him how he's doing, all of that, it's very uncomfortable for him. True. That keeps him in that state of guilt yeah. and of knowing that his decision was right. Correct. It reaffirms that, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it reaffirms it. You got it. Mm-hmm. That yes, his decision absolutely. was right. Was the right one. Right. Was the right one. Right. Absolutely. Yes. And we've got to mm-hmm. now move him through time and up the scale towards questioning his decision. Mm-hmm. That's got to be next. Okay. And there is, for women, one of the greatest things is that when the love is there like it was, and we know that by him becoming a buyer for you and pulling the trigger and asking you to marry him. So we know mm-hmm. that, okay? Mm-hmm. And even in some other cases where that isn't the case, this works like a charm. It's a game changer. It changes okay. everything. When we change, okay. everything changes. Okay. Okay. And you can do this because you have the intellectual knowledge of your approach not being the right one, right? Absolutely. I, yes. I have yeah. some responsibility for my lack of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have the knowledge, but here's the, here's the thing. Knowledge in and of itself doesn't help because you've got your emotions involved. Yes. yes. My heart tells me one, to do one thing when my mind knows better. Yes. And it's, you're continually wrestling with yourself, right? Like, yes. oh, I know I shouldn't reach out, but maybe if it's I just do constant, and then you can't keep yourself, right, from doing it's it. It's a constant internal battle. Yes. And I've gone to the extreme of deleting his number from my phone. Uh-huh. I, did write, I did write it down. However, I leave it at work. Mm-hmm. So I won't, be, I won't be tempted to do it when I'm home and I'm alone, and my emotions take over. Right. In my program, I have a way, however, that you actually start the clock ticking with one simple action that allows you to start that clock. The action Mm -hmm. of something that is different in what you've been doing and is loving because here's mm-hmm. what, what I'm hearing. He, he loved you and you were together for a year prior to him um, proposing. Mm-hmm. It suddenly, um, it, something is, you know, he wanted you, the simple things of just being with him while he was watching TV rather than cleaning or what have you, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That... It's a, it's a pretty simple uh, uh, fix in the relationship as well as this fix of having him feel what he needs to feel in order for him to go back. You've got to reset everything first in order to restart it. And this is a period for you now of completely resetting everything. Okay. That has to be first. You cannot move just from where you are now to going back. He's not in any state for that to occur. Correct. All that has got to be reset, and that love and desire on his part has got to be then after that restarted. But you can do that. And you have a good shot at doing it. And I'm hearing you guys are a good match. 
In other words, despite the age difference, you both don't want to have more children. Mm -hmm. Um, You were getting along well and happy for that year. Correct. Right? Yes. Yes. So it's possible. Yeah, yeah, like I said, we very seldom had any disagreements or miscommunication. It was just the last month or so that um, that triggered um, the the falling apart. Um, You know, one of the uh, during that time that we were together, living together, the end of March, early part of April, I lost two grandmothers back to back. Mm-hmm. And that triggered a lot of old feelings of when I lost my father four years ago. Mm-hmm. So I I would just go home, crawl into bed, and I didn't want to interact with anybody. Mm-hmm. So during that time frame, he decided to bring his son to stay with us for two weeks. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I thought, well, you know, he has a son. He can spend time with the son. I can deal with my grief on my own. So I wouldn't sit down and have dinner with him. No, I wouldn't interact with him. Oh. I wouldn't interact with him or his son. Mm-hmm. And, during, and during that two weeks, his son asked him if I liked him. Oh. Uh-huh. So I asked when he approached me with it. It hurt me. It hurt him. Mm-hmm. But I asked him if he had used that as a teaching moment to explain to his son that this is how people feel when they lose a loved one. Mm-hmm. He says, I did, I did explain that to him, but he says, but that really hurt me that my only son would ask me if you like him because you don't interact with him at all. Mm-hmm. I said, I understand that, but that was not me at that time. That was not me. I said, but at the same time, if you're noticing, if he's noticing and he's that young and he's noticing a change in me, you never once either approach me and say, hey, are you okay? What's going on? Because I've been noticing every day you just come straight to the room and you don't interact, inter- you don't interact with either one of us. So and that is that. one of the things that is um, going to need to be tweaked, not in that you won't be going through things in a marriage, because you will, mm-hmm. right? Uh, absolutely, it, absolutely. You will. But the way it's discussed and approached, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it was too much uh, altogether mm-hmm. of the discussions. In, yes. And, and I it, did tell him that at that time, when we were just having that discussion, I told him, you don't understand. I said, this is not the right time for us to have this discussion because I'm going to have a lot of emotional village from everything else that I'm dealing with. I said, this is not going to end well. I told him this is not going to end well because I'm going based on my emotions from losing both of my grandmothers. I said, so this is not good. So that discussion turned into something bigger and it hurt and we hurt each other deeper than what we should have. This is true. However, the discussion in that way is in and of itself is what actually hurts a relationship, believe it or not, even though it's completely rational and Mm -hmm. completely, it's more, honey, I love you. I wish I could talk about this now. We need to table it Mm -hmm. and just know that, you know, I care and I'm going to get through this. And mm-hmm. I'm going to make it up to you and your son. And, and that's, that's where I, I failed to do that. I, I failed to do that because all I did was shut down. Right. Never did I explain to him at any point, this is why I'm sad. But that it, was my it, fault. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't not have mattered. Verbalizing it. it would not have mattered because, again, it's not about verbalizing it. This is what Mm -hmm. is really the crux and the turning it around for most every woman that I work with. It is Mm -hmm. not relating via verbalization. It is our, see, you are a great communicator. You put things together really well and you're exceedingly clear. You're just great at it. 
most women are. However, it's not how a man needs to be related to most. And that's what we work on heavily mm -hmm. in the program to okay. turn that around for you. Because if you get that, there's no question that you can succeed. You succeeded okay. even with your heavy verbalization, you see? Mm -hmm. So it's not that big of a tweak. But it okay. is, even in its uh, smallness, it's vital okay. to make those small tweaks. So we can okay. certainly talk about that, and we can do that off the air. But I okay. do want you to know that there's hope. And for anyone who is going through a similar situation, there is hope when we as the mechanic of men and the mechanic of a relationship turn it around and get a relationship car back on the road and running in the right direction. And so anyone with this situation, reach out to me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, you can contact me by wanting to be a guest on the podcast and talk about your unique situation, realcoachingconversations.com. You can connect with me and my assistant at coachpolygrooms.com, and we will do our best to help you and get you started on the right path to recovering a relationship in the best possible way to success. So Susie, I thank you so much for doing this today and and I I really feel confident that you can turn this around. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be talking in the meantime for everyone one of the things we talked about today and that's so significant is to remember always that for the best success with men you have to make him wonder looking to lure back an ex-love let coach paula help you get back together with a man you realize might be the one for you Make the next time around a charm with complete commitment. Connect with Coach Paula Grooms on Instagram, Facebook, or at CoachPaulaGrooms.com. Thank you for listening to Make Him Wonder. If you've benefited from today's conversation, please subscribe and share. Connect with Coach Paula at makehimwonder.com. There you can take several relationship evaluations, discover her books and other resources, and find out if one of her personalized coaching programs might be right for you.